Good morning, church family. How's everybody doing today? Come on, is anybody glad to be at church this morning on the last day of the year? There's no better place to be than to be at church on the last day of the year. Well, welcome to the Connect Church once again. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Garvin Chambers. I serve here as a student pastor and as the worship pastor, and I love getting to do what I do. Um, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Taisha. She was the one that was up here leading worship. And we have two beautiful daughters together named Layla and Nova. So I'm, I'm a really blessed man. I'm thankful for everything that God is doing in my life. And I'm honored to be speaking to you guys today. So is anybody excited about the new year coming up? Is anybody excited about, about 2024? Yeah. Man, I'm so excited about 2024. I believe that 2024 is going to be a great year. I know y'all are used to preachers saying the next year is your year, right? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying 2024 is going to be a good year. I believe it's going to be a good year for me and my family. I believe that it's going to be a good year for our church as we move into this new building. I believe that it's going to be a good year for you as well. 2023, it was a, it was, it was a good year for my family. It was just a little chaotic because in March we had the birth of our second child and after, since, since then, it was just, it's just been chaos, you know, adjusting to having two kids and, uh, you know, not having family around to help a lot. So it's been a little chaotic this past year, but it's, it's good chaos. It's not a bad chaos. It's, it's good chaos. I wouldn't trade that chaos for anything else. But I'm so grateful for my family. I'm go, so grateful for my girls. Like I said, 2023 was such an interesting year. And it was an interesting year for the world too, right? So many crazy things happened in the world. Uh, let's highlight a few of the things. One of the things that happened this year is Netflix, they cracked down on password sharing, right? Man, rest in peace, Netflix. We don't even have it Netflix anymore. It affected my family. We were so sad. Sad day. I'm not paying for Netflix, sorry. Uh, another thing that happened, Taylor Swift, she dominated pop culture, right? She was everywhere in the news for doing nothing and doing something. She was everywhere in the news. Do I have any Swifties in here? That's what they call Taylor Swift fans. No Swifties in here? Oh, there's one. Yeah. Her music's mid. I don't like, that's what the kids say when the music's okay. It's mid. Her music's mid to me. But another thing that happened this year, Barbie was the biggest movie of the year. Who would have thought? Barbie. Barbie was the biggest movie of the year. That movie was, in my opinion, was also mid, but people liked it. I'm offending some people already, right? <laughs> another thing that happened this year was that artificial intelligence blew up. AI blew up with the introduction of chat GPT, and then from there it went to chat bots and virtual assistants. Does anybody use chat GPT? Man, I do too. It's, it's a blessing, it's awesome because it helps us get stuff done, but it's also a curse. It's a curse because now we can't figure out what's real and what's fake anymore. Uh, chat, uh, virtual assistants, they could, or AI, artificial intelligence, they, they can create photos. So they can create a photo that looks so real and you can't tell the difference to see if it's real or fake, which is kind of scary. You can make a photo of you and it not really even be you. It also can do voice generation. It can generate people's voices. It can generate your voice and, and, and act like it's you and your voice and calling somebody and saying it's an emergency. That's very, very scary. It's very scary. There, it could even do music. AI created a song with Drake, the artist Drake, and the artist The Weeknd. And it released the song. And Drake and The Weeknd had nothing to do with the song. It created a whole song and it sounded just like them. It had their, their, their flow patterns. It had everything. And it sounded just like them. That's crazy, right? That is so scary. So with the rise of AI, it's, it's hard to know and figure out what is real and what's not, right? So... The word of the year for, for Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the word of the year for 2023 was the word authentic. Because, because of the rise of AI, people are looking for what's real. People are looking for what's authentic. And people have always searched for authenticity, but now it's, it's, more, it's more common that people are searching for it because of the rise of artificial intelli intelligence. People wanna know what's real, and people also wanna be seen as real, right? You tell people that you're a real one, right? I'm a real one. That's what people say when they're, when they're authentic. They say, she's a real one. He's a real one. People want to be seen as real. People want to be seen as authentic. And they want real and genuine relationships in their lives. They want real people in their lives. 
So for 2024, I, I said to myself, I want to be the realest I can be. And I know a lot of people feel the same way. Do you want to you wanna be your truly authentic self going into 2024? Well, I'm going to tell you how to do that. To be your true authentic self, you must adopt the lifestyle of gratitude. And I say adopt the lifestyle of gratitude because it's something that, we, that doesn't come naturally. It's something that we have to choose to do. So today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the lifestyle of gratitude. So for me to talk about the lifestyle of gratitude, I need to tell you what gratitude is and what gratitude isn't. So people get this mistaken all the time, but gratitude isn't thankfulness. It's a common misconception that, and we usually only, in our culture, we only give thankfulness during the time of what? Thanksgiving, maybe some in December. We feel like we have to give thanks during those, those two months in the year and the other 10 months of the year, we're not thankful anymore, right? That's not gratitude. Us doing that, it's like, you know how you tell your, your kid, somebody does something nice for your kid, and you tell them, hey, say thank you. You got to say thank you. That's kind of what we do in the month of November, December. We're saying thank you to, to God because we feel like we're pressured to say thank you because everybody else is in a season of thankfulness. But gratitude isn't just thankfulness. Thankfulness is a component of gratitude, but that thankfulness is like saying thank you for a, a specific thing at a specific time. Gratitude is so much bigger than that. Gratitude is having a thankful heart all of the time and showing appreciation to God for what he's done in your life. You can have thankfulness without gratitude, but you can't have gratitude without thankfulness. So let's see what the Bible says about gratitude. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. This is the NLT version. And it says, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in some, a few, one. No, it says be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul is writing this to a young church that he planted two years before he wrote, wrote this letter. And he, he wrote this because he wanted to teach them some things. He wanted to build them up. And he wasn't, be, he wasn't able to be there in person to do it. So he wrote this letter. And some people, they refer to these verses as the basics of Christian living. And the basics of Christian living is always be joyful, never stop praying, and being thankful. Verse 18 of those verses, it emphasizes the true meaning of gratitude. And if you're following along in your worship guide, here's the, the first point. True gratitude is being thankful in all circumstances. It's being continually thankful for when life is great, when life is bad, when you're happy, when you're sad. It's being thankful when you're feeling cute, when you think you're a snack. It's being thankful when you look ugly. It's being thankful in all circumstances. That sounds impossible, right? How am I supposed to be thankful when bills are piling up, my car is in the shop? How am I supposed to be thankful when my kids are, are jumping on my last single nerve? How am I supposed to be thankful for my kid when she's doing that? I don't know. <laughs> that's my answer. But that's what true gratitude is. True gratitude is being thankful in all circumstances. It's hard. It's not easy. But we are called to do it. It's being thankful to God in all circumstances. So gratitude isn't an annual holiday that we do once or twice a month. It isn't something that, that we just do during Thanksgiving time. Gratitude is a chosen state of being, and it's continuous thankfulness to God. Now you, now you may be saying, why gratitude? Why is this important? Well, let's go back to that scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 18. We'll read it again. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So Paul was telling this young church, these new believers, that everyone who is a believer in Jesus Christ, this is God's will for you. And this is the second point on the worship. God, living a life of gratitude is God's will for your life. It's God's will for your life. So guess what? You don't have to wonder what God's will is for your life. I know we go through life and we sometimes we wonder, God, what is your will for me? Is your will for me to get married? Is your will for me to talk to that girl? Is your will 
for me to, to go to this college? Is your will for me to, to take this job opportunity? But here's the thing, no matter what we are going through in our lives, no matter what's going on in our lives, we are called to be thankful to God no matter what. And God's will, that simply just means his plan and his desire. And his plan and his desire for us to live a life of gratitude. God's will for your life is about more than the circumstances you face, but it's about how you respond to the circumstances you face. And we should respond to these circumstances with gratitude. Is it easy? Not at all. Do I have to respond with gratitude since it's God's will? That the answer to that is also no. God doesn't make us do anything. He doesn't force us to do anything. But should I? Yes, we should respond with gratitude. Because if you want to live a life that pleases God, we should respond with gratitude. So I, may, I know that some of you may have tuned me out as soon as I said we were talking about gratitude probably said, oh, I don't want to hear about gratitude. I don't want to hear about something else that I'm supposed to be doing. Or what do I get out of, of, of being grateful? Well, we get a few things out of being grateful. You get a lot out of being grateful. And I'm going to share only a few benefits of gratitude. But first, let's think of the way that we view our lives. The way we view our lives is kind of like wearing glasses. It's easy to grab the glasses that are closest to us and to view life through those lenses. And naturally, the glasses close to, what, to us are usually negative things, right? So usually we grab the glasses of expectation, of, of worry, the glasses of entitlement, the, the glasses of comparison, and we try to look at life through these glasses. And when we look through life through these glasses, you see that I'm not able to see everything clearly. There's things blocking my view. I can't see my peripherals. I'm not able to see the full picture. And when I'm not able to see the full picture, I'm not able to appreciate what I have. When I have these on, I'm not able to appreciate that, that there's speakers here allowing you to hear me because I can't see them. When I put these on, I, can't, I don't realize and see that I'm standing on a platform that actually makes me look way taller than what I am, and I don't appreciate it when I have these on because I need the platform because I'm short. I can admit it. But when we go through life looking through the lenses of expectation, we tend to miss things. If I look at my marriage with these glasses of expectation, if I look at my wife with these glasses of expectation, I miss everything that she isn't doing. And I'm only seeing a few things. So if I'm looking at her with these glasses, I'm only seeing, oh, she didn't vacuum the stairs like she should have. Or, oh, she ordered more clothes from Sheen. I told her to stop. We're trying to budget, and she's still buying clothes off a of sheen? That's all I'm seeing. I'm seeing all the things that she is, isn't doing, the things that I don't like. I'm not seeing the full picture. But if I put on the lenses of gratitude, I know it takes a little more effort to, to pick up the lenses of gratitude because sometimes you got to search for it. Sometimes it's not right next to you, but sometimes you got to dig, you got to search for it and find the lenses of gratitude and after you put all that effort in looking for those lenses of gratitude, you put them on. And after you put these on, you're able to see clearly. You see the full picture. If I look at my marriage through the lenses of gratitude, I see, oh, she didn't vacuum the stairs, but she cleaned the whole kitchen. And the, the kids, they, she bathed the kids. Or I'm seeing, oh, she spent money on Sheen. Oh, she, she only spent $10. Praise God. She didn't spend 500 Man. When you put on the glasses of gratitude, you see the full picture. And when you see the full picture, you begin to appreciate everything that's happening in your life. It doesn't mean that she doesn't need to change. It doesn't mean that I don't need to change. But it just means that I see what she is doing and I'm able to appreciate her more. And our relationship grows stronger and we grow closer. And that's the first benefit of gratitude that I want to highlight today. Gratitude strengthens our relationships. Grateful people have better relationships. It's more enjoyable to spend somebody, spend time with someone who is grateful, right? Have you ever spent time with somebody who's always negative and always down? It's not fun. I stay away from those people. I know a few of them. I'll stay away from them. You know you know a few of them too. You're just not going to say it. 
but I stay away from the people that are always negative. It's more fun to spend time with people who are grateful. Gratefulness frees us from our negativity so we can be more open in our relationships with God and with people. I promise you, if you look at your relationships through the glasses of gratitude, all of your relationships will improve. The second benefit of gratitude that I want to share this, mo- this morning is that gratitude allows us to experience God's peace. So we just got back from a trip to Tennessee, and on the way down there, it rained the whole trip. The whole 13-hour drive, it rained, and it turned it into a a 15-hour drive because it was rainy and it was dark. We drove at night. And during that drive, I became anxious because I couldn't fully see the road. I was tired. I was getting a little grouchy. I I wanted to cuss a little bit, too. I'm admitting, y'all don't, I'm I'm just going to be real. I was frustrated. Oh, I got real safe people in here, huh? (laughs) I was so angry because all these things were happening and I couldn't see what was in front of me. And that's what happens when you wear the glasses of worry, when you wear the glasses of anxiety. It affects what you see and it affects how you feel. This is what it says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. This verse is telling us not to worry about anything. Don't stress about anything. Don't freak out about anything in your life. But instead of doing all those things, pray and be thankful to God, to God for everything that he has already done. And after you do that, God is going to give you a special delivery of peace, but it's not just any kind of peace. It's God's peace. And God's peace is not like our peace. This is a supernatural peace that the human mind can't understand. It's a supernatural peace that the human mind can't can't comprehend. God's peace is perfect, and we can only receive this peace from God himself. We can't receive this peace from drugs. We can't receive this peace from money. We can't receive this peace from alcohol. We can't receive this peace from porn. We can't receive this peace from sex. We can only receive this God from this peace from God. This peace only comes from God. Does anybody want God's peace in your life? We can only get this peace from God. So gratitude allows us to experience God's peace. So if you need more peace in your life, if you want that supernatural peace in your life, try gratitude. The last benefit of gratitude that I want to share today is that gratitude connects us to God. Gratitude connects us to God. So I want to read a passage from the Bible. It's a familiar story. It's the story of the ten lepers. And this story highlights something that gratitude does. So let's read Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 17. And it says, As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria and entered a village there. Ten men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to this man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. So Jesus encounters these 10 men with the disease uh, of leprosy, and they ask Jesus to have mercy on them. One version says uh, they ask Jesus to have pity on them. So Jesus tells them to go see the priest, and and it says that all of them got healed. Every single one of them got healed, but only one came back to Jesus. And he came back rejoicing, he came back praising, and he came back to the feet of Jesus, thanking him for what he did. Gratitude put this healed leper at the feet of Jesus. The other lepers, they were probably thankful 
When Jesus told them to go, they probably said thanks and didn't think about it anymore and went on to see the priest. But this one leopard came back to Jesus. Those other lepers didn't have the mindset of gratitude. When we are truly grateful and we live out gratitude, it puts us at the feet of Jesus. And when we are at the feet of Jesus, we are connected to God. Come on, does anybody want to be at the feet of Jesus? Does anybody want to be connected to God? If you want to be connected to God, gratitude puts you there. So now that I've told you the true, what true gratitude is and i told you the benefits, I'm going to share with you the how to live a life of gratitude very quickly. So here are a few ways to help make gratitude a lifestyle. The first way to live a life of gratitude is to remember God's goodness. To remember God's goodness. That's what the healed leper did in the passage we just read. When the others quickly forgot what God had done for them, the one healed leper came back to Jesus praising God. He remembered what Jesus had done for him. He remembered the goodness of God. And one exercise that you could do that can help you uh, remember the goodness of God is that in the mornings before you start the day or at night before you go to sleep, you can start writing down what you're thankful for. I got this from my little brother. He, he calls this his gratitudes. And he wakes up every morning at 4.30 a.m. and he writes what he's grateful for. I don't know what you could be grateful for at 4 a.m., but he figures out a way to write what he's grateful for at 4 a.m. But I, I'm, I'm going to start doing this, and, and this is helpful. This will help you to remember the goodness of God. The second way to live a life of gratitude is to recognize that we aren't entitled to anything. We aren't entitled, entitled to anything. When we're wearing the glasses of gratitude, we're able to see, we're able to understand that we don't deserve anything that we have. We don't deserve a life. We don't deserve God's love, but we have it. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. So everything that I have in my life, everything that is good, it comes straight from God, and I don't deserve any of it. We don't deserve to be in God's family. We don't deserve his love. We don't deserve his faithfulness. We don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve to be saved from sin, but God in his love and his mercy sent his precious son Jesus down to live a sinless life and to die for our sins so that we could be saved because he loves us that much. We aren't entitled to anything, but God loves us so much he still takes care of us. He loves us so much he still takes care of us. The last way, uh, the last way to live a life of gratitude is to show God how grateful you are. So how do you show someone how grateful you are? We express it. So we should express our gratitude to God. And there's a few ways that we can express our gratitude to God. If we go back to that first scripture one more time in 1 Thessalonians, it tells us some ways to express it. It says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Always be joyful and never stop praying. Praying. Other translations say rejoice instead of always be joyful. And in the original Greek language, the word rejoice, it just means to be cheerful and be happy. So be cheerful and be happy for what God has done in your life. Remember, that's what the leper did. The leper came back and he rejoiced. He said, praise God. So always be joyful for the things God has done. The next verse also says to never stop praying. This doesn't mean to walk around with your head down and your eyes closed 24-7 because you'll probably kill yourself. And, and it's literally impossible to, to, to pray all the time. But prayer is just simply communication with God. So this verse means to develop a lifestyle of prayer. Make it a consistent habit of communicating with God and being in his presence. So when you're continuously rejoicing about God and you're consistent with your communication with him, you create gratitude. Always rejoicing plus consistent prayer equals gratitude. And another way that we can express our gratitude to God 
is to be a servant. Serve God. Choose to just go to go from just being a believer to going to being a disciple. If you already accepted Jesus as, as your Savior, take the next step in your walk and become a servant. Pick a ministry in the church to get involved in. Any ministry. It could be kids, it could be production, it could be security. Pick somewhere to serve because you can serve God by serving your church. And you can also serve God by simply serving and loving others that you come in contact with. But the ultimate expression of gratitude is living a life of service. And the last way that we can express your gratitude to God is to simply just tell people about him. Tell people about God. Have you ever experienced something good, like a good barber or a good hairstylist or a good, a good restaurant? You don't keep that to yourself, right? You share that with others. You tell people about it because you're grateful for their service. And you don't, you don't gatekeep those services, right? It's the same thing with God. You tell people about the goodness of God. You tell people that you experienced his love. You tell people that you experienced his faithfulness. And a simple way to tell people about God, the easiest way is just inviting them to church. Just simply invite them to church. And we have these invite cards that we've been talking about the past few weeks about the five people that we want to invite to our grand opening service on the 21st. Uh, we're going to take some time at the end of service and we're going to pray for those. Um, but if you could fill those out so we could pray for those at the end, uh, that would be great. But if you just invite people to church, you could tell them, that's telling them about God. So inviting people to church is telling people about God. And it's a way to express your gratitude to God. So to live a life of gratitude, you want to remember God's goodness. Recognize that we aren't entitled to anything and we, you want to show God how grateful you are. Do I get it right all the time? No, not at all. It's something that I work on daily. But gratitude is a spiritual discipline and it's a mark of a mature believer. It doesn't mean that you always get it right, but it means that you're trying. So like I mentioned earlier, gratitude is having a thankful heart all of the time and showing appreciation to God for what he's done in your life. It's that simple. So if you apply these principles, you will live the lifestyle of gratitude that God desires for your life. Amen. Can I pray with you today, church? God, we thank you for your unfailing love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for loving us even when we fail to be grateful. We thank you for loving us even when we're only thankful some of the times and when you have, have called us to be thankful all of the time in all circumstances, God. God, we just ask you to, to help us to live this lifestyle of gratitude. Help us to be more thankful to you. Help us to remember your goodness. Help us to remember what you've done for us. And we thank you, God, just for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for just giving us chance after chance, time after time, when we're not grateful like we should be. We ask you that you help us to grow in gratitude in the year of 2024. Help us to grow in gratitude. Help us to grow in showing appreciation to you through everything. In Jesus' name. And if you could keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I want to give you a chance, if you may, you may have not done this before, but I want to give you a chance to accept Jesus into your heart, to be your Lord and Savior, if you've never ex accepted Jesus into your life. Because God loves you so much that he sent his sinless son down on the, to earth, down the cross for our sins, so that we could be set free, so that we could be with him. So I want to give you an opportunity here to accept Jesus into your heart, to follow Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus. So if you want to make that decision this morning, 
just repeat this prayer after me. We're not going to call you out. We're not going to call you to the front. Just simply repeat this prayer with me. And church family, if you could repeat it with us so that they don't have to say it alone. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are Lord. I believe that you died for me. I'm so grateful for your sacrifice. And I'm so grateful for your love. Today, I accept you into my heart into my life as my savior. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus this morning?